I'm going to uh, challenge you tonight to uh, revise your thinking and to reconsider some fundamental assumptions. Assumptions that are so deeply embedded in our consciousness that we don't even realize that they're there. <laughs> this, is a, this is a map by the artist Tom Friedman. The assumptions that I'm going to talk to you about today is another kind of a map, a map that tells us how the world works. And um, particularly, I would like to try and direct our attention to the notion that most people make the assumption of linearity in a world that is largely nonlinear. I hope that at the end of this talk, the meaning of that statement will be clear, but we won't be getting there in a linear fashion. Some of you know that I've written a book that many people find controversial called State of Fear. And I want to tell you how I came to write it. Because up until about five years ago, I had very conventional ideas about the environment and the environmental movement. This book really began in 1998, when I had decided to write a novel about a global disaster. That was one of the first books I'd written, and I thought, well, I'm old now, I'll write another one. And in the course of my preparation for this book, I rather casually reviewed what had happened at Chernobyl, because I regarded Chernobyl as the largest man-made disaster that I knew about. What I discovered stunned me. Chernobyl was a tragic event, but nothing remotely close to the global catastrophe that I was imagining. About 50 people had died in Chernobyl, roughly the number of Americans that die every day in traffic accidents. I don't mean to be gruesome, uh, but it was a setback for me. You can't write a novel about a global disaster in which only 50 people die. <laughs> I, was, I was undaunted. I began to research other kinds of disasters that might fill, fulfill my novelistic requirements. And that's when I began to realize how big our planet really is and how resilient its systems ordinarily seem to be. Even though I wanted to create a fictional catastrophe of global proportions, I found it hard to come up with a credible example. I couldn't actually come up with anything that I would believe. So in the end, I set the book aside and wrote something else. But the shock that I had experienced reverberated in me for a while, because what I'd been led to believe about Chernobyl was not merely wrong, it was astonishingly wrong. To report that 15 to 30,000 people are dead when the actual number is 56 represents a very large error. 